Hi, everybody. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We're hanging around this little wooden table out in the middle of a jungle. And we are very thankful that you guys will join us and read with us. Now, it's unfortunate, fellas. This is one of the least, um, least uh, watched segments of any of our stuff. Like, nobody likes the King series. Like, uh, everybody likes everything else. But, like, when we're just straight reading scriptures, like, we don't have a whole bunch of people out there like, man, this is, like, amazing scriptures. And these are definitely amazing scriptures because this is our history. This is our, these are our forefathers and foremothers and all of the events and all of the stuff that has happened that make it very, very clear to us that we need to be obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. Now, guys, we are the people who what, believe what, what, what who are we? What are we? Who we are we? the people that believe that the law, the and commandments, the Torah, the five first, the first five books of the Bible, are still in effect today that they were not done away with, that Yahushua, Jesus, so no Jesus in Hebrew, Yahushua, when he died on that stake and he said it is finished, he meant the curse of death is finished. He never meant the Torah is finished. He did not mean that we should not keep the commands. He did not mean we can live as pagans, live as heathens, live as little Satanists and... Go make it to heaven and say, hey, where are your little sickness? Let us into heaven. That is not the case. We are people that are striving to keep the Torah, to keep the laws and commandments the best we can to prove our faith, as it says in James. Yeah, and to show our, our faith by our works. And so we, we believe that the first five books of scriptures are the guidelines, guideposts, the rule set, the, the concrete blocks of foundation for our lives. And it is within these first five books of scriptures that we learn all sorts of things that we need to do to conduct ourselves, to live properly, how our creator wants us to live, how he wants us to operate. And then we have a Messiah that comes in the Besorah and the good news. And, and our Messiah did not come, like Cade said, did not come to get rid of the scriptures. He did not come to get rid of the Torah. He did not come to change what his dad had spent a tremendous amount of time making sure that all of us had and was preserved. He didn't do any of that. And so he says, if you love me, keep my commands. And when you guys say that there's only two commands, and even if there was only two commands, and the, if the greatest was to love your Elohim, your God, with all your heart, mind, and soul, but yet you hate their commands or you don't even know their commands, then by default, you're a liar because you don't even know what you hate. And if you don't know what you hate, then that, that's, a, that's a messed up situation. So here we are, guys. This is Yah's Scriptures. Now, Yah Scriptures is, today is Sukkot. Today is the uh, first day of Sukkot. It is the High Shabbat for anybody on the Zadokie calendar. For anybody who's not on the Zadokie calendar and anybody who's on a calendar of our Creator and are keeping the appointed times, much love to all of you guys. Big high fives to you. I'm not going to mess with you if you guys are on a, another calendar. As long as you are on a calendar that is a calendar of our Creator and that you guys are obeying and abiding, by these abiding by these law statutes and commandments then it's it's a high five i don't see any reason that we need to break each other's necks um over discrepancies in a calendar that we are all trying to keep perhaps it's not on the exact same schedule and i get where people say the appointed times everybody you know we it's an appointed times for a reason but we're also going to have a messiah for a reason the messiah is going to come back and he's going to give us the errors of our ways, he's going to give us a, a understanding of where we have not understood things that are correct. And this is why we absolutely need a leader and he will be coming. Okay, guys, so this is Yah's scriptures. Not available on Sukkot, but it will be after, after tonight, after sunset tonight, the store will be back on. And these are the greatest English translations you guys can ever get. You can do the download. The downloads are free right now. You can go to yahscriptures.com. Just put those two words together right there. Put a .com at the end of that. And you can download the Apocrypha with this. It's all 100% free. For every scriptures that is able to be purchased that you guys get, and this is a large book, guys. This is 3,153 pages. It is 103 books. It is it has three beautiful bookmarks. It is a tremendously large study scriptures what, what six pounds it's over six pounds yeah it is it's, it's over six pounds and so that's why shipping on these is, is a little bit more than than a normal scriptures normal scriptures like what a pound yeah it's an average size it's not your it's not your average book this is not your average book it is actually it is bulletproof for lower caliber guns now you're not going to shoot a, an ar through it uh, it will shoot an ar through it but you're not going to do like low caliber handguns 22 is absolutely bulletproof in terms of low caliber and it's actually bulletproof as far as when it comes to souls 
So this is the, the defense mechanism that you would like. I do recommend reading it, not shooting it, though. So. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Best best to um, read through it. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate that. Um, but, I, you know, at some point, we do have a blank one. One of these days, I'm going to try to fire a, a bullet through this and see how far it does go through it. But it is available. Guys, it's out there. Now, we're getting towards the end of this. This is the... For those who have not been in this, and, and I don't think we pick up any new uh, travelers on this road when we're doing um, books like Kings, because it, it's just, we don't, we have this, the people who like scriptures, and there's there's about 50 of you guys, 60, um, <laughs> out of 38,000. Uh, so good, big pats on the back to all of you guys who are interested in the scriptures, who read along with us, and we encourage all of you guys to read by yourselves all the time. Now, this is where we are at right here. This is the life of Yisrael. For those who do not know, since we're almost done to the very end of this chapter, you're talking about 12 tribes of Yisrael. You're talking about 12 kids of the son of Jacob, Jacob. And these sons had 12, basically the, the 12 tribes. They had 12 families, and these 12 families developed into their own little um, lineage of people. And throughout the times, this is um, this is the days of Saul, the very first king that you see right there is Saul, and he had the prophet Samuel back with him during the days, and then you had um, David and Solomon, and we had Samuel halfway through that, and then we had Nathan, uh, the prophet, um, throughout all of these. And then what you can see here, guys, is you see your forefathers and foremothers that are greatly erred. In their sins, and so the left-hand side, you have the southern tribes of of um, Israel, which is uh, Judah and Benjamin. Then you have the northern tribes on the the right, which is the all of the rest of the tribes. You have the ten tribes up the top. Now, during these these times when the when the twelve tribes split to a ten and two, these guys hated each other. Right, the northern tribe hated the southern tribe. The southern tribe hated the northern tribe. They were at they were fighting each other. They were always at war, sending other people over to get them. Um, it's a mess, right? Instead of being a giant family under the hand of Yah, these guys were absolutely um, marauders in their in their their rebellion of how they wanted to act and operate. Now, as we have been reading through all these scriptures, um, this is the life and time that we've had. And right now, if you guys don't remember, the northern tribe was taken into captivity quite a few chapters ago when we were reading this. And now here we are towards the end of this. And we're just about to get taken into captivity. We're about to, to Nebuchadnezzar is about to come and wreak some havoc. And so um, anyone want to give me a last recap of the last chapter? Anything, the, the last little bit, what we have to try to get us to where we're at? Well, we had the king. We had a new king, Yoshia, who, who was eight years old when he reigned. And he basically, he was the best king of them all. He was great. He did after David. He broke down the altars. He brought down the temples. He killed the evil priests. He killed the mediums, the spiritists, and draw out all the evil, and tried to restore the land of Yahuwah, tried to restore the greatness to it that was the holy land, that was the land, one connected with Yah, that was one directly in contact with Yah, and not cursed, not driven out, and not full of plagues and deans, and then he does all these things for his 40 years, for the time he was a king, and then his son went off and brought it all back, he just undid all the work his father did over the years. He brought the priests back. He brought the sacrifices, the high places, the other pagan temples. He brought it all back and it's angering y'all. Yeah, and so you guys want to take a stab at, at what's the English name of, of Yoshiahu? Josiah. Yeah, Josiah is the English name. That's what we're talking about. And if you guys can see right here, he, he reigned. He reigned a, a little bit of time, not as much as some, but I mean for the end of... The life of these tribes, this is quite a bit. So, um, this is where we are right here. And so, anyone have anything else to add to this, Eli? I don't think so. You don't have anything? You don't have any luggage you can throw around our way that we can take with us with gleams of wisdom? Anything of the sort? If you don't give the commands, this could be you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you don't give the commands, this could, this could absolutely be you. Okay, so here we are, El- Fellas, we are in 2 Kings 24. Here comes big bad Nebuchadnezzar. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, came up and Yehoiakim became a servant for three years. And he turned and rebelled against him. Okay, what does that say? What, what, do we, what can we make of this right here? Uh, well, this is the guy from Babel. We know, we know a lot. If you know anything about Babel, you know this place is a 
We could play in this place, conquers Judah for a very long time. Yeah, and so it's Yo Yohi Yakum. And so we are, that is, um, we're in 23, right? No, 24. Oh, Jeho Jeho yeah, Je there it is. So it's, it's how the English name on this is J E H O I A C H I N. Wow. Yeah. And so that is it. We're, we're literally two kings before the end, before it's all over. Okay. So this dude came up, but, but what did it say in the first thing? He, he basically said he came up, he became a servant, right? And then he turned and rebelled, rebelled against, against him, him right? Three years. Yep. And Yahuwah sent against him raiding bands of Kazdites and raiding bands of Aram and raiding bands of Moab and raiding bands of the children of Ammon. And he sent against them Yahuda to destroy it according to the word of Yahuwah, which he had spoken by his servants, the Nevium. Now, what do you guys ex think of the raiding bands of these guys? Well, would be? there weren't he was his rebellion in Babel, and so since he's his punishment was to be it was his Jews' punishment to be in Babel, you who had to send these people to <laughs> get him back under punishment. What do you think a raiding band would look like? What do you, what, uh, a lot of people, armies, probably. Do you think these guys are? Um, do you think these guys are out there for? The rule of law, or do you guys think these no, guys? are just crazy. You guys are out here to steal, pillage, yeah, dominate destroy. land. Yeah, yeah you don't cause chaos. You don't become a raiding band unless you have the force to go deal with it. And um, they don't call it a raiding band because it's they, they they walk in and everybody's like, "Hey guys, how you doing?" Hey, give me your stuff. It's called a raiding band for a reason. Okay, three. Only at the command of Yahuwah, this came upon Yahuda to remove from his presence because of the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did. And also because of the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which Yahuwah would not forgive. And the rest of the acts of Yahuwah Yakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the sovereigns of Yahuda? So Yahuwah Yakim slept with his fathers, and Yahuwah Yakin, his son, reigned in his place. And the sovereign of Mitzrayim did not come out of his land again, for the sovereign of Vavil had taken all that belonged to the sovereign of Mitzrayim from the wadi of Mitzrayim to the river Pereth. So not only did Babel take over Judah, he also took over Egypt too. Yeah, he's just a conqueror. Ne never can Esther. He's the, he's the man, right? When yeah, it comes down I think to, he, he was the time he, he was the most powerful kingdom in the world. Yeah, but this is yeah, this is definitely for sure. Okay, Yahu Yakin was eighteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. And his mother's name was Yakushta, Gusta, the daughter of El, El Nathan of Jerusalem. That's that's a strange name, El Nathan. Mm -hmm. Hey, so, what's up? Spanish. El, El Jaden. El Nathan. <laughs> El Eli. Okay. And he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to all that his father did. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, came against the city, as his servants were besieging it. And Yahuwah, sovereign of Yahuda, and his mother, and his servants, and his heads, and his eunuchs, went out to the sovereign of Babel. And the sovereign of Vavol in the eighth year of his reign took him prisoner. This is always fascinating me. The, 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 the people of eunuchs, right? The eunuchs are always there. Eunuchs are always like mentioned in this thing, right? For whatever reason, right here in this thing, um, it's all of a certain, it's like his eunuchs aren't listed as his servants, right? They're listed as something else. It says, and his mother, and his servants, and his heads, and his eunuchs. So it's like these people have like, I don't know, like a whole group of eunuchs for some reason. And I don't know why. They're not, they're, they're, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is with the eunuchs. I do know what it is with the eunuchs, but I don't know why they're all in these uh, tribes here. Okay, anyone take a stab at this? No, I don't, I don't know. Yet. Okay, and he took from there all the treasures of the house of Yahuwah and the treasures of the sovereign's house. And he cut in pieces all the objects of gold which Shloma, sovereign of Yisrael, had made in the Hayekil of Yahuwah, as Yahuwah had said. How do you think Homeboy cut uh, objects of gold in half? You think he had it used a grinder? He had some kind of wet tool or something. Uh, I mean, gold is uh, how would you metal. cut gold in half back in the uh, You think they had axes? No. I don't think they had axes. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. They, they had, had something. Axes or something. I don't know. Axes would be hard to cut though. Uh, yeah, I don't think. I think it's. Well, I, mean, I think gold it's, can break. It's far less primitive than I think we think. I think these guys are are far better at this. Um, and, and gold can break, but I mean, it said he cut in pieces all the objects of gold. And I mean, who knows? Shalom made all sorts of stuff out of gold. So, I mean, we're talking like, it's not going to be like pieces of like aluminum foil of gold. Bolt, bolt cutters? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. They had some tools. 14. And he exiled all Jerusalem and all the officers and all the mighty brave men, 10,000 exiles, and all the craftsmen and smiths 
None remained except the poorest people of the land. And he exiled Yahayakim to Babel, and the sovereign's mother, and the sovereign's wives, and his eunuchs, and the leading men of the land he exiled from Jerusalem to Babel. And all the mighty brave men, 7,000, and craftsmen and smiths, 1,000, all who were strong and fit for battle, these the sovereign of Babel brought to Babel into exile. Okay, so why why do you bring all this to these guys? What's up with this? Anyone? Um, well, these are like the strong, these are like the leaders of the land. He like made sure that everyone saw that their leaders, the strongest people of the land, were like basically defeated, and so they had to follow suit. So why would he take the mighty brave men? Because you know we, we know that you know from scriptures like the mighty brave men, the guys yeah, of like, Dawid were like the crazy killers. One or two, only takes one or two to start a revolution of these guys, or like sometimes just one, and they would go and slaughter like like uh, Samson. He went and killed like six hundred people. It's so. In- it's interesting, though, how he had this system set up to where he was able to assimilate all of these different lands, take the biting men, <coughs> take these people, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> sorry, guys, the craftsmen, smiths. So what is he doing with the craftsmen and smiths, exactly? Well, stop it. And the make, smiths, are we talking about voice, can't make Jonathan Smith? Are we talking Roger Smith? No, kind of like a blacksmith. Oh, blacksmith. Like, people like make weapons. Right. Okay, so why did he take all these guys? Why do you, what's, what's with this particular verse right here? Well, they took them so they can't build weapons. They basically took the army away. They basically took the able to peel out or able to fight back. Yeah, but what do you think he's going to be doing with these guys? Oh, making them build weapons for them. Yeah, these guys, these guys, he basically did what the United States did with all of the Nazis. Back, back in the day when they supposedly defeated Hitler and he like, he strolled off to Argentina by himself when he's probably not dead. But um, they took all the Nazis and all the people and they brought them to the United States. And they have things like Operation Paperclip, um, where it's actually a, it's a documented government thing, where they brought all the Nazis in there and got all this information, did all this stuff. And they've, the, the, North America has been essentially the Nazi country since, since we did that because we had all of the people that were just very into great evil with uh, Mr. Mr. Adolf. Okay, uh, continuing on. seventeen. And the sovereign of Babel appointed Mataniah, Yahoyakin's uncle, to reign in his place and change his name to Zedekiahu. Why do you think he changed his uh, name, Yahoyakim, to uh, Zedekiahu? Uh, maybe Yahoyakim was hard for Now can answer, I like to change names a lot. You'll see later on if you read Daniel. Yeah. He, change, he, he likes to change people's names. Wait, what was your thoughts? Uh, yeah. Maybe like that's like hard to pronounce in their language, so maybe they made it like an easier to pronounce in like the language of Babel. We'll call you Bill. This is it. You're gonna you're gonna be Zedekiahu. Zedekiahu sounds like it sounds like a Hebrew name though, honestly. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Zedekiahu was 21 years old, or uh, Matinyah was 21 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Camutal, the daughter of Yirmiyahu of Livna, and he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to all that Yehoiakim did. For this took place in Jerusalem, in Yehuda, because of the displeasure of Yahuwah until he had cast them out from his presence, and Zedekiah rebelled against the sovereign of Babel. Well, there we go, fellas. That's the, uh, that's the end of this one. It's almost the end of these people. Um, what are we going to do when we get out of Kings? Do we just keep on rolling? Yeah. Just we have the prophets, but we could also go back to the other storm. We can go into Daniel's time. The thing about the prophets, yeah, the prophets, though, it's, I think it's kind of somewhat out of order, though, right? Yeah, because it should be like, First Kings, Second Kings, now like half Second Isaiah, and then so we should have had these prophets that are sitting here giving these guys these all these things prior to them going in. So it's kind of out of order. We could go to Daniel because that's like the next part of the story. Could go to Daniel, yeah. Could go in there. All right, yeah. We'll just keep on rolling. We'll see where it goes. But or all right. we go to Nehemiah after the exile. <laughs> I want to go to Ezra. I want Second Ezra again. I can't wait for us to read this, but it's going to take us a long time to ever make it through this stuff. If we we'll get there. All right. Well, everybody, we thank you guys very, very much for being part of the family. We hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Much love to all of you guys, to everybody out there celebrating Sukkot. Shabbat Shukot. Sukkot. Much love. All right. Shalom. Shalom.